Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got some Call of Duty Ghost gameplay for you and some information about the dedicated servers. Now, a lot of you probably already know that there's going to be dedicated servers on all platforms, and for those of you that don't know, yes, it's been officially announced. Dedicated servers on all platforms, that's PC, Xbox One, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and even the Wii U. Everybody gets dedicated servers. A lot of this comes from Mark Rubin's tweets, some of my own reading and investigations. Uh, Mark Rubin was also tweeting that there's going to be a possibility of PC mod tools and post launch custom servers but there's no promise on this because all of this sort of design comes after the initial launch of the game I'm going to talk about this later but right now what I would like to talk about is dedicated servers and listen servers I did an entire video on dedicated servers which is linked down there in the description but for now let's talk about listen servers because there's a lot of confusion as to what a listen server is and a listen server is believe it or not essentially what we've got right now what we have right now in Call of Duty Black Ops 2 and in every single Call of Duty game except COD 3, COD 3 is an exception, is a listen server. It's oftentimes referred to as a P2P server because they function in a similar way and because, uh, well for Xbox players anyway, which most of the commentators and type are on Xbox, Microsoft forces you to do P2P for their VOIP, which is the chat that you hear, that has to go through Microsoft and not through the game company. So you've got like Treyarch's way of doing it, Microsoft's way of doing it. Uh, Treyarch is going to be doing listen servers and Microsoft as P2P, so you have elements of both. The simplest way to describe a listen server is a server where somebody is also playing on. It would It's what we've got right now, the host is hosting the game, he's using his residential bandwidth and his console to host it for all the players and everybody, but he's also playing on the game state and making changes for everybody, so without lag compensation the host has an advantage, When the, like the old school host advantage going all the way back to the Halo and the Quake, whenever the host was like the god of his own little world. In Call of Duty you all know that there's a lag compensation that changes is this so that the host doesn't have as much of an advantage and sometimes that's a good thing sometimes it's bad I can promise you that you don't want to entirely remove it because then the game becomes completely unplayable but just keep in mind that listen servers is what we've got right now and what ghost is probably going to do which I can't guarantee you but how it seems to be built from this point perspective and with all of the knowledge I've got is that Ghost will judge your ping and your network area. It's going to determine where you are on the network and what your ping is and what your bandwidth is and all these other things, but ping is probably the number one thing. And then it's going to decide if you're geographically close enough and if your ping is good enough to a dedicated server or not. If you cannot directly connect to a dedicated server, it's probably going to put you into a different bracket of matchmaking and it's going to still try to get you to a dedicated server depending on your ping. Or if it's not, it's going to move you to a listen server, which is what we have now that has a better ping and ideally this will give you the best game state possible. I know that the type of connections currently running on Black Ops 2 are not popular, as a matter of fact it's known as Lag Ops, but a lot of other games still use listen servers. Gears of War 3 uses this when their dedicateds are down, uh, quite a few other games do that don't want to pay for dedicated, and it's just one of those things, but ideally, and like I said, in an ideal world where people don't play on 3G mobile hotspots or have three repeaters going out to their lake house and everybody has good internet with you know, low ping and no jitter and high bandwidth and there's nothing goofy going on, then you probably won't know whether you're on a listen server or a dedicated server because everything will be great. Uh, the only way you'll really know is if you get on a listen server and the host gets bored and starts downloading lots of pornography on BitTorrent, then you're guaranteed to know. Uh, the other thing you need to know about dedicated servers is, now this is not guaranteed, but it's a very high probability based on the economics, is that as Call of Duty Ghost hits its maximum maximum maturity, as we're, you know, 9 months into the game, 10 months into the game, 11 months, a year, 2 years, whatever that date is determined, the dedicated servers are going to start going away. Those dedicated servers are going to get turned over to Call of Duty, whatever comes after Ghost, or whatever Activision's next big project is, Destiny, or whatever. But dedicated servers won't be around forever, so you need the listen servers to be able to continue to play the game after those go away. It's kind of like on the Xbox One, everybody was worried, like, oh, when the cloud servers are down, we can't play the game. Well, Ghost is going to mean when the dedicated servers are down, you can still play on the listen servers or essentially what you've got now in Black Ops 2. The other half of this commentary is I would like to talk about the bit uh, where Mark Rubin tweeted out that I was hoping to add a server browser and rentable ranked servers once we get through launch. No info yet. Uh, it's possible that this is a PC only kind of thing because this is the thing that the PC crowd really, really craves. This is what they ask for every year. This is what they push for. And it really appeals to them, but it doesn't have to be a PC only thing. It would be really cool if it were on console too. Or it could be. There's some pros and cons. It's like this on Battlefield 3 console. It'll be like this on Battlefield 4 console. 
but imagine if you have rentable servers where you can do and you can set them up and they can be ranked and to some degree you can set up your own rules and things like that and this is theoretical and speculative at this point uh, but it's a cool idea some of the advantages you get is that you could play the maps you like and not the ones you don't you can search for servers based on what maps they are playing or perhaps search for servers based on what maps that you know, can just blacklist some maps if this map is in rotation I'm not going to play it that could mean no nuketown for you or only nuketown for you or whatever that variant is in the new game there'll probably be at least one small map uh, custom rules you can do stuff like play on cod 4 pro mod or other variable rule sets kind of like mlg if uh the theoretically there's no league play or clan battles doesn't turn out the way they wanted to or you know if mlg changes their rules too fast and they do that they change their rules pretty quick usually faster than the developers can keep up with which is sometimes good and sometimes bad then you could see a lot of mlg servers out there mlg might just have their own servers or pro teams will have their own servers like you want to scrim optic you want to scrim envy we'll just hop in the envy server and get in queue and get ready for your scrim there which you know it's pretty cool you can get some custom game types and some of these could be ranked too you can get level ups by playing these people but there are some definite disadvantages and number one with the rank being well couldn't this be abused couldn't, can you change the rules to give yourself more advantages more bonus points kind of stack it in your favor to win something like this level up quick i could imagine if it were i don't i would hope it's not that easy but you could have like quickly master prestige servers do it now blah 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 kind of you know kind of like the old hacked lobbies but except it'd be more legit this time unfortunately if you have a bad host Host in one of these lobbies you have a really really bad at host kill the host getting booted or in the battlefield comparison I'll play on battlefield PC and I'll say like no AEK allowed and the translation of that is the AEK is the host's favorite gun only the host can use the AEK if you touch it you're going to get booted things like that and the rules could get really crazy I'm gonna I'm just comparing straight to battlefield here because a lot of the crowd overlaps you know battlefield uh, custom service it's a lot of stuff like 1000 tickets Metro rush 24 7 all these guns banned in Call of Duty I can imagine it's gonna be nuketown only no regular guns 360 QS for every kill and no stun grenades which I think there would be a lot more of that than what I would like to see, but some people like that. I mean, some people really, that's their favorite way to play this game, and it kind of gives an option for that sub-community to go play Nuketown only quickscoping and stay out of regular matchmaking and leave people like me alone. So it's kind of a kind of a mixed bag. I, you know, if I did the server browser, I'd find a lot of garbage, but at least people that you know I don't personally like to play with are playing the game type that they love, and they're leaving me alone letting me play the game type that I like. And, you know, most of the time, comparing to Battlefield again, there's not that many bad servers out there. Most hosts run things pretty good, but when you get booted for killing the host or for silly things, the bad hosts stick out, and they're the more memorable ones. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the commentary. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.